Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Gudmundsson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Hello and welcome to the Nav Viking coffee mug tutorials. Today what I wanted to go through is um, payment terms. Payment terms, uh, even though it's a little small um, thing inside NAV of all the features, it can be a little bit tricky to understand. Um, but once you got it, of course, it's easy. Um, the main reason why it's a little tricky is because you know it's very flexible. You can put in all kinds of uh, dates or date calculations in there. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to understand, you know, which date drives what. So to begin with, uh, I'm going to go into purchase orders. Here we go. Purchase orders. And I'm going to create a new one to uh, one of our good vendors, Progressive Home Furnishings. Um, and in here, I'm going to open up a tab, which is called invoicing, just like that. I'll close out my lines. So I'm just going to be looking at these two tabs. Um, I have here that the Progressive Home Furnishings has a payment terms CM. And if I look into what that is, it says current month. So what is current month? Um, seems a little bit um, tricky to understand, but uh, the due date is 1031 and the document date is 1019. So from that, of course, we can infer that it's going to be the last day of the current month. So basically the current month means that you are allowed to pay it in this month or in this, yeah, in this month that we're in. And the system is going to pick the last day of that month, of course, because we always want to pay the last possible time, or that seems to be the trend at least in, uh, in most companies. So if I change the document date, and it's important to note that the document date is the one that drives the due date. So not the order date, not the posting date, but the document date. That is the date on the invoice um, from them. So if I change that to say the 25th of October, notice that the due date does not change. If I change it to the 1st of November, then it moves to the last day of November. So um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what possibilities are here. I have uh, 14 days, uh, 21 days, cash on delivery, etc. So I can see the formula in here as well. So 14 days is 14 D. That's the formula that goes with that. One month. Uh, it actually has a payment discount in here in eight days. So one month is one M, 21 days, 21 D, etc. So hopefully you get the uh, idea. If I pick cash and delivery, which is zero days, I can just put that in here. Uh, and then that's the actual day that I put the document date in. Again, if I change that to be T, which is today's date, um, that's a little shortcut then uh, it changes the due date to the 19th. Okay, so how do we figure out all these formulas? Well, there's a page on Microsoft. If you go to MSDN, uh, if you just Google calc date in the MSDN, uh, you get this page and this page is, is notoriously difficult to understand unless you just uh, read in programming languages or you, know, you understand programming very, very well. Uh, I'm, however, going to attempt to do this in English, uh, explain this page. So here is basically saying that your date expression, which is could be 30 days or current week, etc., is made out of sub expressions. And what is a sub expression? Sub expression is something of the sign and a term. And the sign can be plus or minus. And the term is something else. Now, the sign, important to notice, is that plus is usually what you do. If you omit the plus, of course, it's going to be just a number. But you could go negative. You could say negative 21 days, and that actually goes backwards. Um, so this allows for that. And what is the term? The term is made out of number and unit, 
or you wanted a number, meaning you can actually put the number before the month or day or whatever it is, or even after, or a prefix in a unit. And number is just a normal positive integer. The unit is any one of these. So this is important to remember. You can use day, weekday, week, month, quarter, and year. So these are the um, symbols that you can use that correspond to days. And weekday is kind of cool because it will skip the weekend. So if you say plus three weekdays and you are on a Friday, it will go into Wednesday. So uh, I will skip the Saturday, Sunday. And then the prefix last uh, here on the list can be C. So C is current, just like we saw before. Current month means the uh, last day of the current period I'm in. Uh, it's a good thing to remember, last day of the current period you're in. All right, so here we see some examples, 30 days. Um, what I'm going to actually do is do something funky. I'm going to say current quarter and create a new um, payment term called current quarter. So that should be the last day of the quarter that I'm in. I'm going to go in here uh, into the purchase order, look this up, go into advanced and edit this list to create a new one and I'm going to call it CQ, current quarter. My due date calculation is going to be CQ and the discount, uh, the description is going to be current quarter. Okay. So if I hit enter on that, or OK, and I change this, notice that it puts me at the end of the year because 1019 is in the fourth quarter. And that means that the due date is going to be the end of fourth quarter, which happens to be the end of the year. So hopefully that this explained um, how the payment terms work and how they're driven. They're driven by the document date. So the due date is driven by the document date. And uh, we have all of these uh, formulas that we can use. And that page on MSDN is very helpful in kind of clearing that up. Uh, that was all. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As always, we welcome any questions or suggestions. Um, so leave comments or, of course, if you can subscribe, that would be awesome. Uh, we are trying to build our fan base over here at Anacta. And uh, if you want to look for further information, please go to anacta.com.